Greetings and thanks for joining me today. Chess.com has recently released their holiday bots once again and I am super excited about that. This December I have been counting down the days and this is against Dash 1600. I played the black pieces and after 41 moves in this position and I'm going to go through this game and show you how to how I got here and show you some tips and tricks and uh, there's a lot going on in this game so I'm going to try to talk quick. Uh, we're going to look at some getting the queen out too early, lack of development, hope chess, uh, pushing major, uh, pushing a pawn with major piece behind it. And there's a really cool idea. I hope you hang with me towards the end game that these, finding these little differences make the difference between a win and a loss. And I'll show you that. And uh, so let's get started. Let's get to it. Uh, computer says I played at an 86% and dash played at a 75% and let's get to it here. I want to show you something that's opening. Okay, so I am going to shout out a little confession here. So I saw that this is some kind of Mason attack or something and I I did a Google search on it and it said it's a unsound variation of an unsound opening. And I don't, my confession is, I don't really study openings a lot. I, um, you know, I started by learning, uh, is it three or four or something? And then just kind of, I saw that so many variations were kind of getting into the same thing, just going different steps. And so uh, my memory is not my strongest point, uh, I confess. So I rely more on my creativity, but uh, I, I encourage people to, you know, learn two or three openings and just kind of stick with them and then let let your knowledge grow but i do recognize the patterns but i don't always remember the names and all the different variations it's too much for me anyway okay so just remember try to control the center and develop your pieces so that's what i'm going to do here and this is what exactly what i was talking about so i thought about going here and um eventually i do i just do it in a different order as we'll see here like that okay so I'm going to try to keep this going. And this is one thing I wanted to point out is, you know, it's okay to use your queen. Uh, oh, computer says accuracy. It knows better than I do. But, um, you know, I've used my queen before in, in a game, but you better have something in mind because um, when you get your queen out too early, it gets knocked around quite a bit. And here, Dash should have brought it straight back, really, because you'll see what I mean about getting knocked around. And so... Here, I have a habit of developing the knights first. Here, I should have developed the bishop first, but um, that's okay. Just remember, try to control the center. And um, so here, we're going to take a look. This is a nice pin, but it's, you know, defended too easily, obviously. But I got pretty excited when I saw it, though. I did tell you that, but uh, okay. So let's keep things going. Now, here, here this is what I want to talk about. This is important. Okay. So my minor pieces, all four, are off the back rank. They're developed. My opponent has messed around with his queen so much, only one minor piece is out. This is not good for Dash. This is one of the big takeaways I want the audience to have from this video is um, <clears throat> messing around, moving one piece or the queen while your opponent is allowed to develop. So... This gives me the strong upper hand here, even though, you know, there really hasn't been any exchange yet or anything like that. Um, I guess some pawns, but no piece exchange or anything. But black definitely has a stronger position, and it's just these little things. So if you're struggling with dash, don't feel bad. Keep this thing, and I'll tell you, dash is strong. I, I think, you know, to me, dash feels at least like a 1700, maybe even getting close to an 1800, uh, just my personal opinion. Uh, a worthy adversary for sure. Okay. Uh, and here we go again with moving this queen around. And so, yeah, here, this was kind of silly on my part. And this brings me to the hope chest is, hope chest is, you know, I shouldn't play where, oh, gee, I hope queen takes queen because that's what I'm shooting for. And I hope my opponent does it. That, you know, that's a terrible tactic. You should always assume that your opponent sees your tricks too and try to think of a better one. That makes a huge difference. Okay, so back to the game. Um, uh, the computer does this, uh, or Dash 1600 does. And here I, uh, 
I got a little too excited. I, I wanted this queen exchange um, just because my queen is still in the back rank. This queen is actually doing something. And then I was going to, at the same time, at least somewhat develop this rook and have my rooks connected. That's why I wanted the queen exchange so bad. Uh, but I was probably forcing it too much. Um, so I do not like a piece in my half of the board. Uh, so I take that out. And now this queen is undefended. This is Dash's big downfall is um, uh, he got his uh, queen out too early and now it's, you know, it's, I got it, I got it pinned. Um, so, um, okay, so I got my back, knight back to a more relative spot. Um, trying to control the center still. And, oh boy, here we go again. You know, this bishop is going to be trouble. So I have him with tempo trying to knock something out with this queen, push this pawn. But I'm going to have to slow down my tempo and deal with this bishop because I do not like that. It has future ideas of causing me a lot of harm. So um, let's see. I, this is why I did this. And I, I'll tell you, this, yes, when you have a major piece and a pawn on top of it, you should be trying to push that pawn, as you'll see. I finally do here later, but I wanted to digress and play really clean chess and, and get this going, um, So, or get this uh, bishop out of here. So now I'm threatening it. It's defended by the knight, and so there it goes. And so, you know, at 1600, I'm going to kind of skip some of the control of the center and all that stuff, I, I assume. My audience already knows that at 1600. 1600 is very respectable ELO, especially Dash. I think uh, he's pretty tough. Okay, so now this pawn, I'd love it if it recaptured. That would be great. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. I actually don't remember what happened. Oh, yeah, okay. So, um, let me keep this going here. And Okay, so now my knight's being threatened. So I deal with that. So now I like this. I have... I mean, I know they're under attack right now, but the basic idea is I have these two pawns with two major pieces underneath them. Perfect. You know, this is what I'm looking for. Finding these little things makes the difference. And we're going to get towards the end game, and I'm going to show you something that I found in the game that probably made the difference between a win and a loss. Okay, so let's keep this going. Now I'm threatening, and then that pawn is defended. Uh, and that's good, you know, uh, keeping your pieces out there, getting them developed. This is where you get that pays the dividends for doing such a thing. And I, you know, my uh, rook owns all this. So I kind of have the king pinned in here at the moment. And I like that. And I'm going to try to keep it like that. Um, I am in check. So uh, do the queen exchange now. And so at this point. I like to stop randomly and be like, okay, wait a minute, before we go too much further, where are we at here? So I have two major pieces, and two minor pieces. My opponent has two major and two minor. Okay, uh, what about pawn? Yeah, I'm up, uh, what am I up, one pawn? Yes. So, okay, uh, and I'm deep into enemy territory, so that's good. Okay, and I'm uh, threatening... Um, you know, this, if I queen here, this would be mate. That's over. So uh, my opponent has to deal with that. And so Dash wants to do a bishop exchange so that Dash can defend this position. And uh, I'll certainly take and take again. So now let's reevaluate. Okay, I'm still up my one pawn. Uh, things I don't like about my position is double stack pawns. Um, you know, so just stop and evaluate. I find some games, if I play them a little hasty and lose, that it's probably because I didn't stop and evaluate very often. So, okay. So now, now things are getting serious. I want to take out this knight and queen and take and take. Okay. So, um, yep. It's looking pretty serious right now. I guess you could say things are getting pretty serious. Okay, so let's get to it. Now here is the, the move that I wanted to show you at the beginning of the video that I talked about because 
I've got, and this, this all came about because I had a major piece under a pawn. So one of the big takeaways of this uh, video. Okay, so if this knight takes, it's mate. It's over because I go here, I queen, take, and then take again. And that's it. It's mother mate because I own all of this already with this rook. So, um, let's take a look at that. So, if the knight takes here, um, it's mate. So, yeah, there's not a lot of option. Um, Dash is going to lose that knight. And, uh, you know, I've got this pawn. I'm pushing it. There's no way I'm taking my major piece and moving away from that pawn. <laughs> and so here I tried to, I mean, I see, I, I looked at this position for about five minutes. And I see here that this is check. And then, you know, I was afraid the king might come here. And there's all these things. I'm like, there's got to be a mate in here somewhere. And I didn't see it. And if you see something better than what I'm about to do, uh, leave a comment below. I'd be curious to know. Um, I, I learned by taking my time playing chess and, uh, you know, this dash. I might try, you know, this game, I think I spent about 30 minutes playing this game, maybe 40 minutes. If I had to do it, you know, in 10 minutes or something, I, I don't think I could beat dash. So uh, remember when you're practicing against these bots, you know, take your time and go deep in the tank. Okay. So I decided to do this. Take, take. And now the queen, ha or I'm sorry, the king has to retreat. And so we'll take this down to a game where it's, um, you know, look, I've got a rook and a knight against, you know, four pawn, plus I have four pawn. Now we just got to play good, clean chess, good chess fundamentals, and it should be a win. And so, you know, this is just an act of desperation out of dash. I think a human would resign at this point. Um, but I've screwed up plenty of games. Where I should have won so huh, maybe hanging in there isn't such a bad idea um, you'd be surprised how badly I can screw up a good ending okay so here I have the king cut off and if you've seen some of my other videos and I've played uh, dash before in a different video and I'll post a link in the description here but I like to cut off the king and what I call make a box and so what you're about to see is the lazy man way of making a box. Um, you know, I could use, you know, it's so hard to use the knight in the end game to, to cut off. Um, and so I just, yeah, you know, look, once it's all clear, now it's all clear. I'll just push this pawn and it's going to be mate. And that's what I did. Um, so anyway, uh, 41 moves. I think dash is uh, a little difficult. I think 1600 is respectable. I think it feels a little more heavy towards the 1700 or a little better. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Ain't worth much. But um, just remember, uh, the biggest takeaway is look for these little differences. That's what makes the difference. You know, um, do you have one piece or the queen? Are you are you moving it too many times in the opening? Uh, you know, especially if you're even matched. Forget about this type of scholar mate type type stuff. It's not going to happen at 1600. Play clean fundamentals and you should win. And so, anyway, thanks for watching and I hope that helps. Have a great day.